Where was the game won? The game was won on uh, the game plan of understanding personnel. You know, uh, number 30 had a great game against us because we played small the majority of the game. But we wanted the ma majority of the balls to go his way and not Landers, not the Jewies, not, the, not Davenport. So they got caught up into the game of throwing it inside instead of shooting those threes and being more dynamic. So I think the game was won tonight. That was just tonight's game, today's game plan on us just paying attention to detail on our personnel. Man, it seemed like this is what you wanted all along, right? Kind of the cohesion and the well oiled machine that was the offense in the first half. What, what allowed that to happen? You know, guys cutting off ball, the ball, you know, going everywhere, spreading the wealth kind of thing. Yeah, I think that by us going small, and there's no knock on KO, there's no knock on Chandler because he eventually came in. When we put DeAndre at the five, he's such a huge matchup problem. And he, we went five out, which is spread the entire floor and let him just make plays. And he and KD did a phenomenal job. Uh, unsung hero? Or not? Unsung hero. I would say Elijah McCadden because he had to guard David DeJulius the entire night. You know, I just look at a guy like Jonathan Lawson coming in the game and just making the right play. Uh, Keontae, his energy was so awesome in the first half. So those guys, we've been asking so much from them, and they came in the game and, and did phenomenal. Did you feel like it was a must win? It was. We said this before we left. We know, you know, these type of games for a lot of reasons, not only because we need it. It's because you want to show that you're a good, good teams went on the road. And then Cincinnati is one of those teams that's right there with us. Because Houston has just kind of almost separated themselves by being so dominant. And then all of us are fighting us, Tulane, Cincinnati, UCF are all fighting. And um, you have to have this win. So 11 days ago, you know, after that UCF game, the, the mood is obviously somber. You know, we're speaking to you, speaking to Kendrick. Things have taken, it seems like, a 180 here, um, especially with this quadrant to win. What, what's gone on and what's the vibe around this team right now in the locker room? Well, How would you describe the, it? I, I would say the entire staff is coming together um, in our conference rooms and we're really talking through everything that we need to do better and what we're doing with the film with Jordan Verhoes, our, our video guy. We're putting together these films to show the guys where we're making our mistakes. We're learning from our experiences. So as we move forward, paying attention to detail, communicating, you know, it's getting better every time. So the more we show them, the more they see, the more they carry it over into the game. So that's why we're getting better. Does the outside noise affect these guys? You know, after the UCF game, a lot of people on social media or, or whatever were talking about, you know, same old Tigers back on the bubble, here we go again. Mm -hmm. Do they hear that stuff? And how does that I'm sure they do. It doesn't bother me because it's a long season. You know, you still have plenty of games left. And, um, you know, it's always going to be critics. They're always, they're always going to be critics. And the guys just have to believe in what we're teaching. And what we're by what we're selling at all times, and not worry about the outside noise, and keep winning. Does this one feel extra good given the who's on the other side? Who's on the other side? <laughs> well, you know, it feels extra good because it's Cincinnati first, because you know that's our rivalry all the way back when I played. It feels extra good because we needed the game. And thoroughly, anytime you play against your old players, you don't want them to beat you, so they can say, "I told you so." And Landers and Tyler are two terrific players. We know that. Did you have any conversation with Landers either before or after? Any before kind of the game, I hugged change? him. He came over and hugged me and said he loved me. No, it's, there's no bad blood. Those guys understood what was going on. I was really good to those guys while they were at Memphis. So it's not like I was some butthole. So I'm, I'm just telling you. So, so no beef with any of those no. guys that you mentioned? No. no. Was he texting you during the week? Nope. No texting. Just mutual respect, man. At the end of the day, when you finally have an opportunity to sit back and reflect, you see it for what it's worth. So this may not be officially recognized as your 100th win, but in real life, it is. So is that weird to like, you know, because like... It is. It is. It's very weird, but I'm so thankful to God for the opportunity. All I wanted to do was make a difference for my hometown team, to try to get the fans back in the stands, to get the team to the NCAA tournament. It's been a struggle, but I feel like we're turning the corner now. This might be a, a curt question, but do you know as far as like the official record book, is this 100th or is the next one going to be 100th? How does that work? Next one. Next one? Yeah. Oh, the next one. Is that, is that, how does that make you feel? Yeah. It makes me feel good, man, because it makes me understand that I'm in the positive and not in the negative. You know, you can only come in and feel like you have the, the, the knowledge of what to do. You got to surround yourself with great people, which I have all five years, that have helped me get to this level. And we recruited great players. So it's, it's a great milestone. But the fact that it's, but the fact that it's like not officially the 100th win because of the stuff with the NCAA, like, is that? I, I'm, I'm only going by the games I've coached. Right. You know, I think that's just unfortunate 
because I, everything I've done in my life from when I first went to the NBA until now has always been from my heart. I don't have any motives. So that's unfortunate, but for me, it'll be my 100th. Tonight, last one. this afternoon, second game in a row where it looked like Keontae Kennedy was the third piece of that big three that y'all have. You know, at times it seemed like it was going to be DeMario. At times, you know, Elijah McCann. What's allowed Keontae to kind of separate himself into that second tier or even first tier? Right? Yeah, Keontae works really hard. He's in the gym every day. He's in there shooting. And we need his outside shooting. We do. And uh, I'm proud of his, his efforts because he's prideful. You know, he wants to have, he wants, he knows that we need him. And he's in the gym working. So that's why he's kind of separating himself when it comes to that.